Welcome to the Walking Down Main Street podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Coasters and Castles Travel. Coasters and Castles Travel has travel advisors in more than 35 states. We call our travel advisors vacation specialists. Our advisors can have specialties from theme park travel, ocean and river cruises, and all-inclusive resort travel. Our advisors travel frequently to better get to know the destinations our guests would like to travel to and regularly keep up with destination training. Our advisors do not charge a planning fee, so it costs our clients no more to book with us than it would to book direct with the supplier. For more information, go to www.travelcnc.com. That's T-R-A-V-E-L-C-N-C.com for a no-cost, no-obligation quote. We can also be reached by phone at 844-422-8785. Let me introduce everyone. I am Lynn McAlini, co-owner of Coasters and Castles Travel. We also have April Botta, co-owner of Coasters and Castles Travel. Hi, everyone. So excited to be talking travel with you. And then we are also joined by Whitney Maddox. She is a senior vacation specialist with Coasters and Castles Travel. Hello, friends. We will be bringing you an episode each week. We will have topics related to Disney destinations, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, cruising, and fun and sun vacations. We love travel and want to share our experiences with you. Episode number seven. Today we have two guests with us. We are welcoming Chrissy Legrano Weinstein. She is a senior vacation specialist with Coasters and Castles Travel. Hi, thank you for having me. And we are also welcoming Amy Flanagan. She is also a senior vacation specialist with Coasters and Castles Travel. Hi, thanks. I'm happy to be here. Well, we're very excited to chat with you ladies today. Today, we're going to be talking about the Walt Disney World Moderate Resorts. Uh, Chrissy and Amy are going to be sharing their experiences at Walt Disney World Moderate Resorts. So April, why don't you start with the the resort introduction? Okay, so one of my favorite places to just wander around and spend a lot of time with is Fort Wilderness. And there you have options to stay in a cabin as well as campground options. And so Chrissy, what has been your experiences in Fort Wilderness? I enjoy Fort Wilderness. I think um, the experience of being on the campgrounds and and wandering around the resort itself is so interesting. And I love how people who come in and they camp, whether it's in a camper or they bring tents or they bring their RV or fifth wheel, um, they decorate their campground just to make it their own. And holidays, they're decked out with lights and they do trick or treating. I mean, it's just so much fun to be there. there's, it, it's just a different experience. It's not like a typical resort hotel experience. Um, it, I joke around, I'm not much of a camper, but um, it's camping without the real roughing it camping. <laughs> um, and then you have the cabins, which are fabulous. Um, you know, being able to sleep six with um, a, a kitchen uh, is a great, great, great option for larger size families. Um, so I, I really do love the idea of, um, Fort Wilderness campgrounds and and cabins. And what are your thoughts, Amy? So I, um, I have stayed in the cabins and it was a ton of fun. Um, the kitchen is, you know, very well, um, stocked in terms of, um, utensils and things in there. I personally don't do much cooking while I'm there, but, um, for the families that have say allergy issues or, um, would prefer to bring food or have food sent there and, um, eat that way, it's a great option. Um, you know, it, they are, like Chrissy said, very well laid out, the cabins. Um, I had a blast with the golf cart rental that I did. Um, that was like a whole attraction in and of itself, um, tooling around on the uh, golf cart. Um, and it makes it really easy to get up to the boat launch that just can zip you right over to the Magic Kingdom, um, which is super convenient. Um, hoop to do review is there. Like, it was nice to be so close to so many things. Um, even the, um, the uh, sing-along a campfire sing-along that they have is a ton of fun so there it it is a really different experience it's very private um so my husband doesn't really care for crowds and being around a lot of people and you're not if you're staying at a cabin um on a loop um it's very it's very cool 
and I'm excited to go there in the future over Christmas um, in the holiday time because of the extent of decorating that I have seen. It looks fabulous. And even the I was there at Halloween once and the golf carts were all decorated too. So you could spot your golf cart a mile away because of the lights and other decorations that were on the side of it. One year for Christmas, yeah, I say it. Sorry, one year for Christmas ahead, Eve, uh, we did a sleigh ride, and so the campgrounds those are arranged in circles, and they call them loops. And it, the sleigh ride will take you around some of the more common, more decorated loops because people stay there and they go and they stay there for a few weeks. They can stay there for a few months, and they really can go all out decorating. And that was a lot of fun to just take the sleigh ride around. You can do uh, regular carriage rides when it's not Christmas time, but we really enjoyed that, and it was. Even though it wasn't quite so chilly or snowy out, which was okay, it was still very uh, a, a great way to get in the holiday spirit. Yeah, I did the uh, campground back in 1996, a long time ago, um, and it was it was really convenient. Um, the one thing, and this may have changed, they do have cable there. So if your RV is set up for cable for the campground, you can actually get cable, but you need to make sure you have your own wire. So we ended up having to pay for wires. Um, to set those up. I actually think I still have them um, all these years later. But uh, so that would be my one big thing with that. And then you definitely, it, um, sorry, Amy mentioned the, the um, golf cart. It's a lot of distance between where the campground loops are and where the, um, the, the restaurant area and all that stuff, the activities area is, uh, depending on where you are at. So there is an internal bus, but it may be a little while waiting for that. And even you'd have to take a bus from your from the internal bus system up to the main bus area to catch a bus to the parks as well. So that's definitely an, a, something you want to consider if you are staying there. I love um, that the you don't have to own an RV or a tent or you know whatever to to stay there. I love that um, you have the option of renting an RV through private companies that come in and literally set you up. Um, and that I think is just such a great option for families who want to have that campground experience, but don't have their own RV. Yeah, that's that's definitely a benefit. Definitely. And a nice feature of if you stay at Fort Wilderness, you can take the boat to go over to Magic Kingdom. You know, they have buses to yes. go to the other parks. You have to take the internal bus to get to the main bus depot to take the other park buses. But the boat to Magic Kingdom is a lot of fun. And we've even gone to Fort Wilderness, walked around the Circle D Ranch, where you see the, the horses. And we've walked down to the beach and sat on the beach to watch the electric water pageant go by. And from there, you can see the fireworks from Magic Kingdom and they pipe in the music. So that's a lot of fun, too. Whitney, have you had any experiences over at Fort Wilderness? So I haven't ever stayed at Fort Wilderness, but I surprisingly have a lot of clients who book there. Um, they love the cabins. I have a lot of clients who don't even really need the space of the cabins, but they just like it. They love to, they love to have that extra room. They like to be a little more secluded. They like things like the pony rides and stuff that Fort Wilderness has to offer. It's kind of like its own little theme park there. And I've also had a decent amount of people bring pop-up trailers where their kids also came and pitched tents and... They just thought that that was fabulous. I'm not really a tent person, so I will not be doing that. Uh, the cabin is... No <laughs> tent for me. The, the me cabin either. may be as far as I go. That's roughing it for me. Maybe a trailer, but I you won't f probably find me in a tent there. <laughs> they don't have club level tents, so... They don't. Not. Yeah, I know. That's, <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay, so now we're going to go on to another moderate resort. We're going to talk about the Caribbean Beach Resort, which has recently undergone a humongous refurbishment. Uh, Chrissy, can you talk to us a little bit about that one? So Caribbean Beach Resort used to be one that I never, um, it was really never a go-to resort for me to recommend to people or to stay in for myself. Um, I always found it just to be way too big. Uh, but now that they... Um, took away a piece of that um, resort area itself for Riviera. The I feel like the it's definitely more compact. It's definitely smaller. It takes away a couple of bus stops. Um, so now that it's easier to kind of navigate around and it has been refurbished, 
and it has the amazing Skyliner. Um, <laughs> it's definitely one of my um, go-to moderate resorts. Um, I like the sizes of the rooms. I'm not really a fan of the pirate room. I don't know um, if any of you have stayed there um, before. I think, Lynn, I think you have. Um, I just don't like the beds in the pirate rooms. They're not queens. They're just not overly comfortable. Um, so I'm not a fan of the pirate rooms, but all the other rooms, I think they're great. I love, I love all the new refurbishments they've done with taking out the carpets and raising beds and, um, you know, kind of making it more usable space, um, which I think is a great thing. Um, but their quick service location, they're grabbing go markets, they're fabulous and their pool is awesome. Um, it's just such a fun, fun pool area. It's in the middle of the resort and it's on its own little island. So it's, you know, it's a walk to get there, but um, it's a great, great pool area for families to be at. And then you have the quiet pools, which are great for if you, when you come home from, or come home, I always say come home when I talk about Disney resorts. Um, but when you come back from, you know, either a morning at the park or, or a good long chunk of time at the park and you want to just sit and relax by the pool, if you don't want the hustle and bustle of the main pool, um, I love that uh, the moderates uh, have quiet pool areas. Yeah. I mean, I did say at the pirate rooms, um, I, I, I thought the decor of the bed was really cute. However, my husband and I have a, a full size bed at home and this bed was smaller than a full size. Um, and because it's literally a little boat, if you're a little bit taller and your feet might somewhat come close to hanging off the edge of the bed, you're going to be cramped. I mean, we were on our honeymoon and we had to sleep in separate beds because they were so small. So, um, I, I was super disappointed because I'm a big pirate fan, um, uh, to that aspect of it. And I, the other thing I didn't like, and maybe they've changed that since they've done the refurb is that their AC shuts off during the day. And so we came back, this was at the end of April and our room was 90 degrees and it took until four in the morning for it to get cool enough to actually sleep. So I've learned as a secret that you can bring a balloon in, uh, get a helium balloon to help trigger that so that it moves. But uh, I was not really a happy camper about that aspect of it. Um, all so the Amy, rooms now, all ahead. the rooms now seem to have that motion sensor air conditioner. Um, yeah. And I agree. I, you know, I run hot and, it's definitely, I know people who stay with me don't love it, but I like to live in an ice box. So, <laughs> but it's Florida. You don't want to come into your room at 11 o'clock at night and have it be 90 something degrees. You don't, no, not when you've I been mean, out in the yeah. park sweating all day, you want to come home and just kind of relax and be cool. So, and you know, another thing about the pirate rooms is those are in the more distant buildings too in the resort. So the furthest yeah. away from the main uh, area where you have the restaurant and the, the um, family pool and um, transportation. So, so you do have a little bit more of a hike to get to the, the rooms. They there it's a cute room, but I agree. I think it, it's not the most comfortable room. And I think the bed frame too, I've knocked my knee and my leg on that a few times as well. So yeah, it takes a little bit of negotiating, but it's a cute resort. I don't, love the new food court area you have to order in one area and then you can go pick up your food at the windows and i didn't love it we had breakfast there and the breakfast wasn't very good which was disappointing so they did oh that is yeah, disappointing. No, it, and it's a little bit smaller it feels like you don't have as much room to move around in and so it was a little confusing you order in one specific area and then they do have another separate grab and go area which doesn't have a huge selection either and then you go to the windows to pick up your applicable food. And they did have the Coke Freestyle machines in there. So that was a nice little addition, especially if you're doing the re resort refillable mugs. They do have a new gift shop, which that's always important to us. We like gift shops. Mm -hmm. um, they do have a new outside pool bar set up. That was pretty cool. But, yeah, it's not the, the top resort on my list. But it is a cute resort. And being the central hub for the Skyliner, I think, is huge. Because you have to, if you're going from Pop and Art of Animation, you have to take the Skyliner to Caribbean Beach to either go to Hollywood Studios or Epcot or vice versa. So um, it puts you more central to getting to other locations without having to take an extra leg. Not that it takes that long, but it still is a, it's a little bit more convenient that way. Do you have any thoughts about Caribbean Beach, Amy? 
Yes, absolutely. I um, I love the fact that um, some of the buildings in Caribbean Beach are closer to the Riviera Skyliner Station than Riviera is, mm -hmm. which is pretty amazing. Um, and um, again, I too didn't recommend it that much. And one of the reasons um, beyond just generally being spread out was their check-in area and their where their gift shop was and Magical Express was a bus ride away from the rest of the resort. So you had this internal bus that you needed to take there. So at the end of the day, you're coming back and wanting to pick up something that you had sent back to the hotel that you purchased in the parks. You have to ride a separate bus to go over and get it. It was a pain. So um, I love that they took that you know, out and they've now put it into the old Port Royal. Um, so it's just a lot more streamlined and you know doable to be able to get over to there, um, walking with your luggage and not take a separate bus. Um, and I like the, just the overall sort of vibe of the resort. It's very tropical. A lot of my clients really love feeling like they've gone to the Caribbean. Um, and, you know, so they have like two vacations in one. Um, and then the island in the center has like a kid's play area and some really neat uh, rocking benches that um, swings, I should say, um, that you can sit in and they have covers over them. So you're not, you know, too much in the sun. Um, so there's a lot of like neat little spaces with beaches and palm trees. Um, and I do love that they, I believe, are one of the few resorts that they have um, freestyle machines spread throughout the resort too, mm -hmm. which really gives you a ton of value with your, you know, mugs that you might purchase to, you know, use while you're there instead of having just one location where you can get them refilled. Um, so I do like that. Um, so it's definitely moved up a lot um, in terms of a uh, more recommended place for me. Yeah. I like that about the freestyle machines. I was not aware that they had added those in after the refurb. So. Okay. So now we're going on to my favorite of the moderates. And that's uh, Port Orleans Riverside. Um, we'll start out with Chrissy again. Chrissy, what is your experience with Port Orleans Riverside? I love Port Orleans Riverside. Um, I am a big fan of um, going to Disney World and really getting the most bang for your buck and, and really kind of um, taking in everything that you absolutely can. And part of the reason that I love Riverside is it's just so well themed. I love that it is really, you really do feel like you're in that old time South. Um, I love the um, Alligator Bayou. I love the mansions. I've stayed in um, each section and yes, it's really big, but for some reason, as you're wandering around, it doesn't feel as big when you're walking around, because there's so much to look at and do. Um, I love that it's just a boat ride from Disney Springs. Um, it's not a far boat trip at all. I love that you can, you know, just kind of mosey on down the Sasagula River and take your time getting there. Um, their food court is great. I feel like it might be, um, I, not that it's a little small for the size of the resort that it is. I just feel like, um, the, the table areas just aren't overly comfortable. Um, it's a little dark, but I mean, other than that, I, I really do enjoy it there. Um, I, again, they have um, a main pool area and quiet pools. Old Man Island is great. Um, one of the beauties of staying in Riverside, I happen to like, and I kind of tell my clients, especially who are going to be spending some time at their resort, um, and not, you know, kind of go, go, go morning to night um, park people that want to enjoy all that the resorts have to offer. Port Orleans Riverside is really, um, it's sister resorts with French Quarter. So you can use the pools at both resorts. So that's a huge benefit of staying in Riverside. Um, you know, moseying down the, the walkway, you can walk right over to French Quarter, um, go to Dubloon Lagoon Pool. There's a splash pad there. Um, so that really is a huge benefit of staying at Riverside. There are multiple bus stops within the resort itself, um, but it's only that resort that, you know, that you, you, it's not like you go there and then always go to French Quarter on the bus. So I really do enjoy Riverside. Um, I think it's just pretty. It's laid back. 
Um, so that's definitely one of my um, more well-liked resorts. <laughs> Yeah. And it has Yeehaw Bob. Wow. Yeehaw Bob is a just, he's a classic man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he's ever going to be allowed to retire, that poor guy. <laughs> um, he's just so fun. And it's a free show. He really show. is. He's a lot of fun to watch. He's very energetic. Um, I, you know, I, he's just, I, he's a huge draw for Riverside. Um, so yeah, I, I do. Yeehaw Bob is a lot of fun. They really need a bigger area for him, though, because you get really cramped really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Amy, what was your experience there? Um, my experience, so the the time that I stayed there, I had rented a car. Um, so I didn't have to, be, and I happened to get one of the farthest rooms. Um, but I tended to drive around to the main building um, and park there. So I didn't do as much walking. But I do like that Riverside very nicely has some spokes coming out from the island. So you, you don't have to go all the way around. Um, and so that does help, you know, make it feel smaller. Um, which is nice, you know, in a good way. Um, I like the um, the two sort of themes within the one resort where they have the Alligator Bayou and then Magnolia Bend. Um, and I've had several clients that really, really like the Royal Rooms. They've And what's nice about the Royal Rooms too is they're a themed room, but they're a themed room with queen beds, not a themed room with double beds So um, or full-size beds. So, you know, they, they really enjoy that. And the Royal Rooms are really pretty quick across a little walkway to get over to the main building. So they're almost themed and in a preferred area um, to be able to get to the main bus stop. So it's, you know, I stayed in Magnolia Bend area. Um, I like the um, Alligator Bayou area for clients that need that for the sleeper which is a great option, um, you know, and some of the other um, resorts don't have that um, fifth sleeper option for younger children. So that's nice to have as well. It's very pretty there. Yes, it is. April, how about you? What's your experience at um, Port Orleans Riverside? I love Riverside. That's definitely one of my favorites to be in. I've only stayed in the Alligator Bayou section. I haven't stayed at Magnolia Bend in the mansion section. But we've so enjoyed it. You know, it is a pretty large resort, so it's spread out. But just walking down the paths, I mean, I love Spanish moss one that you see hanging off all the trees. And they, they really make you feel like you're in the middle of Mississippi somewhere. It's so pretty. And whether we're staying there or not, we generally end up at the food court to get something to eat. Because you can get some decent meals there. And they have like a make your own pasta section. And usually they'll have like a nice ham dinner or turkey dinner. And the desserts are great. So we've always enjoyed that resort. We've taken the boat from there down to Disney Springs, which is a great ride. You know, even if you just want to do something and kill a little bit of time, riding the boat back and forth, it's such a pretty ride. You go past the Treehouse Villas at, at Saratoga Springs. And just seeing a different view of Disney Springs is awesome. But we definitely enjoy it. I haven't tried any of the princess rooms. Again, the far out buildings have the specially themed princess rooms. Have any of you tried those? I haven't personally stayed in them, but my clients have enjoyed them, the royal rooms. Um, and they they have actually found that they are pretty convenient to get to the main building. So, you know, I do like that part of it. Yeah, we stayed we stayed in those last year and my girls were obsessed. They're princess obsessed. They thought that was amazing. Like the even the uh, border wallpaper border across the top of the room has little, you know, different little things from a bunch of princess movies, and they thought that was so amazing to find all those all those little things. And uh, Tiana writes you a letter that's like on your table. The um, faucet is the genie lamp. There's just all these amazing things of all these different princess movies, and they just thought that was the best thing they've ever seen. They loved it. And the fireworks on the headboard. Oh yes, awesome. fireworks on the headboard. Oh yeah. Yes, they were they were obsessed. Ooh. Oh, I didn't know it had that. I might have to stay there. <laughs> yeah. One of the cool. next times we go down, April. All right. Yeah. Let's put that on the list. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, now we're gonna chat a little bit about the the Port Orleans French Quarter, which I have not. It's the only modern I haven't stayed in yet. So I have oh, not man. stayed there yet. I know it's on the list. We were supposed to go there in in um in June. Yeah. That's where we were supposed to stay, but it didn't work out. So so what what you uh, think about that one, Chrissy? French Quarter is hands down one of my favorite resorts in all of Walt Disney World. Me um, too. 
uh, right? I just love it. Um, and the refurb uh, in the rooms now with no carpets and again, the raised beds. Um, I, Amy laughed the last time we stayed there because I'm a little vertically challenged and I would sit there and my little legs would dangle, but <laughs> um, it's just such a pretty happy resort. Um, from the minute you walk in, uh, that you know you're greeted as if it's old time New Orleans with um, you know Mardi Gras beads, and it, it's just so much fun. Um, now they've got a whole area dedicated to Mickey shaped beignets, and oh. I'm sorry, but you cannot have a bad day if you have a Mickey shaped beignet in your life. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> their um, their food court is good. I am not a huge fan of real Southern cooking. Um, I love a good shrimp po' boy, but if you're staying there for more than a few nights, it kind of gets a little much. So again, having that proximity to Riverside and be able to um, kind of go back and forth is really a huge plus for a French Quarter. Um, I actually put um, my best friend stayed there uh, in February and I brought my kids up to see them and they were wandering and right in the middle of the courtyard um, behind the lobby area, there was a big um, sign and they have a scavenger hunt and the kids can go to the front area and get um, their little scavenger hunt list. And when they find all the little uh, bayou alligators uh, around the resort, they bring it back and they get a pin or, you know, some little trinket. And it was just so cute. Um, so French Quarter, it's so small, it's compact. There's only one bus stop for the whole resort. Again, the boat to Disney Springs is just such a huge plus. Um, I really could go on for hours and hours and hours about French Quarter. It, I just love it so much. Um, so I, I really, it, being one of the, the, being really the only moderate that just has the one bus stop because it's so small is a phenomenal plus. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you don't want to be coming back and waiting through three bus stops to get off the bus. But um, so that's a great, you know, option. And then plus, you know, you've got it so that if you have two adults and kids in the room, one adult can very easily go get cups of coffee in the morning, get breakfast and bring it back to the room. Um, so it really is just such, it's so well laid out. Um, I yeah, I just love it there. I can't I can't say enough happy things about French Quarter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Amy. So I know you love this one as well. Tell us about your experience. I do too. I do, I don't want to be repetitive because all the things that Chrissy said, I completely agree with. I mean, French Quarter, I loved it before I ever stayed there just because on paper being so small and um having the single bus stop. Um I'm also very lazy because I want to save my steps. To, in the parks. So I, when I stayed there the first time, I walked from the farthest possible room to the lobby and it took me less than five minutes. You can't say that yeah. anywhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, so well, it's, maybe, it's maybe Riviera, but <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no. Um, because you could be waiting for an elevator or something like that. Yeah, so, true. Um, you know, it really, it was, it, it's amazingly compact and, and yet it's not just that once I stayed there and discovered just the feel of it and the vibe and the kids splash pad. And I had really good luck at the gift shop because I love a good gift shop. And so there was so much to love about it that, um, if I am giving a recommendation to somebody and they don't need the fifth sleeper my first go-to is always French Quarter. Absolutely. Hands down, you know, Me too. The, the top. And then it's a good option too, for doing guaranteed connecting rooms with larger families that mm -hmm. don't want to stay value. Um, they want to have the water slide. They maybe want the proximity to Disney Springs. And so then they'll do two guaranteed connecting rooms at French Quarter. And, you know, they've been very, very happy. So it's, I love it. I One of go. the other things that um, I've had people love about French Quarter is, and I mean, it's one of the pluses of being in a moderate overvalue is the proximity of the bar to the pool, which is great. But French Quarter has a, um, a hot tub right by the pool area. And I have parents and, and girls trips and, you know, friend trips, and they love that aspect of having the hot tub there too. Um, 
so that's that's a you big know, that's draw for me with one. moderates. That really is. I mean, that that keeps me from if I'm choosing, you know, between a value and a moderate, I will choose a moderate just because of the hot tub. Mm-hmm. Because walking in the parks all day, you're sore, you know, and the older you get, the sore you get. So go soak your old bones in that hot tub, and then you feel ready to get going for the next day. Last year, we got to be so, in French Quarter uh, over Mardi Gras, and that was fun. We weren't staying there, but oh, we went fun. to visit. And so, because I knew they were going to have all kinds of activities. And one interesting thing they do is they have the cast members that work there create floats and they do a little Mardi Gras parade. So they have that and then, oh, yeah, and then they have activities, all different kinds of activities for the kids. So it's definitely, if you're there that time of year, head over. You know, you can go get some beignets, you get some beads, you do the little scavenger hunt. So much fun. And, and they have, you know I'm looking up when Mardi Gras is for 2021 now, right? <laughs> you definitely have to try it. It was super cute. I'm we mad. had a lot of fun with it. So worth just going over there. And it's, you know, you're getting, it's fun. It's fun for the kids. And it's a free activity. So you're not doing anything extra. And you're not in the craziness of the park. So well worth checking out. But, there, yeah, there's so many good things about French Quarter to say. And, you know, the relationship with Riverside, the boat to Disney Springs. Yeah, I think Definitely it's kind of highly recommended. I think it's kind of funny, Chrissy. You mentioned the beignets, but there also are boozy beignets. Have do they still have there those? Are <laughs> they do? That's what I'm I'm there for. But um, they do. French Quarter, hands down, is one of my favorites too. And I grew up going there. Uh, my family stayed there so many times as a kid. I have so many memories of riding that serpent slide. And my kids thought that was the greatest thing. Um, so I just, I love that resort too. I love the whole overall feeling. I do miss the old uh, food court area and the decor that was there. Cause it was like in your face Mardi Gras with like huge Mardi Gras masks and beads and stuff. And I know it got like an elegant makeover, but uh, that was some of my greatest memories as a kid was going there and seeing that and getting Mickey waffles. So. I'm a I'm a big fan of French Quarter too. Well, it's definitely on my list to stay at. So I only have a few resorts left to stay at. Yeah. So. Okay, Whitney. How about you introduce the the last two resorts? All right. So the last moderate is my favorite of all time, Coronado Springs. I love it. It gets a bad rep because it's very large and Sometimes there's a lot of walking. It has internal buses. But I love the overall feeling of that resort. It has some of the best food I've ever had. Amazing Mexican food. Amazing margaritas. It has a fabulous pool. Uh, I just love that resort. I love... uh, There's three different areas. Casitas, ranchos, and cabanas. I prefer cabanas when you're staying in the regular rooms. Uh, A lot of people like Preferred because that was closest to where the entrance and the buses were, uh, which has changed since the tower went up. It's still pretty close to those, but I like to be in the cabanas because that's actually closest to the pool. So I enjoy that area. Uh, I have not stayed in the Grand Destino Towers yet. I am scheduled to stay there in October for our annual meeting, which I'm very excited about. And... uh, Even though I haven't stayed there, we visited last October. We ate at Toledo, which is the restaurant there, brand new restaurant up on the top. The views are amazing. The food was absolutely out of this world. Um, I went with my girlfriends. We had a really, really great experience. We were the last people in the restaurant, so we ended up getting like a tour of the whole restaurant from the cast member. And that was a really cool experience. Uh, he took us all around. They they have separate rooms there that you can actually rent out uh, for different things like meetings and stuff like that. I don't really know all the rest of the details on that, but that was pretty cool. And um, just the tower overall is beautiful. All all of the new architecture there is just just so beautiful. So I love that resort. Uh, they have finally have bridges. Uh, they have a new place called Three Bridges, I believe is the name of it, which is the uh, like bar grill area on the lake. And those bridges connect you to there and to the pool, which is much easier because 
I've stayed there before, before that was open. And it was a long walk from the casitas area to the pool area. Um, so that was a little difficult and now it's easier to cut through, but, uh, I just, I love Coronado. I love the whole overall vibe of it and I'm a huge margarita fan. So I like the margaritas and yeah, I just love it. So who's next, Chrissy? What do you think? Have you stayed there? I really do. (laughs) I really do like Coronado. Um, it is a fabulous resort. Um, the rooms are actually larger, um, as far as moderate rooms go. Um, and that's mostly because it's the moderate business level resort. Um, it's, I find Coronado a little quieter than most of the other resorts around, um, in Disney World. I love the pool area. Um, that pool is fabulous. Um, at the, um, there's the dig site. Um, you know, the kids play over, you know, around the dig area. The pool is great. Um, they've got, again, the multiple quiet pools or leisure pools. Um, those are fabulous. I've heard nothing but good things about Three Bridges in Toledo. Um, so I am super excited to try both of those places. I haven't eaten there in the, the new sit down bar areas at all um, since they uh, opened Grand Casino. Um, the food court at Coronado, I like, um, I am not a huge spicy food fan. Um, I like a little kick, but I, you know, again, the same as French quarter. I like it, but I'm not, you know, I'm not jonesing for it seven days, you know, on vacation. So, um, I definitely, um, utilize the, uh, chef services at the quick services when you say, Hey, can we kind of modify that a little? Um, I do like the rooms. I love being able to walk through, um, from Casitas to Ranchos and the, um, hammocks around the beach, you know, the little sand areas. Um, it really is just such a pretty, pretty resort. Have you seen the tower check, Chrissy? Um, I have. I haven't stayed there yet. I really am excited to to try the tower. We were supposed to stay there last year, but um, you know, plans changed way too often. Um, so <laughs> that's definitely <laughs> that's definitely on my list to um, to stay uh, at one point this year. Actually, so I'm excited to be to be staying there. Yeah, and the cool one of the cool things about the towers is it's the only moderate that has a club level. Um, you know, deluxe, yes. del- it's the deluxe resorts that have the club levels and none of the moderates except for this place has it. And I haven't stayed there yet. That is definitely on my list because I like club level and I love Coronado. Um, but that's just so cool. And it's it's always been like that. I, I, Coronado's been more of a deluxe feel overall. Uh, before they put the towers in, they used to have business class rooms, which was similar to the club level. They had their own mm-hmm. lounge, you know, so I think that's really cool. If somebody's looking to maybe save a little bit, but still have a little step up of an experience, I think that's a good choice for them, for sure. And one thing to watch when you're yeah, staying um, at Coronado is it is a convention hotel. There is a huge convention center. Mm-hmm. So it's something to be mindful of as to how busy, because there are times it can be very busy with conventioneers, and there are times that it's normal. So something just to pay attention to if you do choose to stay there. And yeah, Amy, how about Coronado, you with Coronado? Kind of to piggyback on um, what you were saying, Whitney, is that, um, you know, I feel like Coronado has some aspects of deluxe, including like they have a spa there. So you can get massages, the only of the moderates that you can can have that. You can't even do that at all of the deluxe yeah. ones. Um, so it really, there are some deluxe amenities at moderate pricing. Um, there are times that Coronado has the best pricing of any of the moderates, um, especially it, Sometimes when discounts are released, it can be, you know, a really great option. So I've had clients move there when a discount was released and they weren't initially planning to stay there and then they've fallen in love with it. And then that's now become their go-to place. I had clients stay there fairly recently um, at the end of last year and they loved, they were over, I believe in the Ranchos area was where they got placed and they loved looking at the lights on the lake side of Grand Estino. Because the whole side of the building, you know, has these neat changing lights 
that were just a ton of fun to look at and watch. So it was something fun for them to see. So I like the fact that it does have the tower along with the more traditional moderate layout. So, and having those um, bridges has been a huge improvement because that lake was something else huge. to have to go around just to get your coffee or humongous, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, you know, that's, I'm super excited to stay there again now that they have those, the bridges and the tower. So me too. We need to check that off list, Amy. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. And I, so I've actually stayed oh, there. Sorry. I was going to say, I think that it's Hollywood studios fireworks. You can see pretty well from there. Um, in a lot of the areas. There's another good restaurant there too, Maya Grill, which is in the older part, but that was always like a hidden gem for my family. We would go there all the time and they have the best chimichurri steak I've ever had in my life. So it was so delicious, but uh, it's cool to be able to see fireworks too from, from your resort. So that's been a hit with a lot of people. Okay. Um, so I've stayed there a few times and um, the first time I stayed there, I actually did not like it at all. It was, we were in the ranchos. I've been in ranchos twice and I've been in Grand Casino twice, once. Um, with the ranchos, the first time I stayed there, the Pepper Market, which is their quick service, it was one that you had to wait to be seated. And it actually took us about 20 minutes to get seated. Um, and then you had to wait for them to bring your drinks. And then you had to tip the person to just seat you and get your drinks. Plus, I'm allergic to hot peppers. So just to get regular scrambled eggs, we had to order special for everything. Um, so that was that was a challenge for me, and I wasn't super excited about that. Um, the second time I stayed there was in Grand Destino, and I liked that even less. Um, the lobby has a bar in it, and it's a little bit down below. And the noise in the bar echoes so loudly up in the check-in area that you can barely hear the cast member, even if there's no one else checking in. So I was a little frustrated with that. And there's no tubs in the Grand Destino rooms. So... I like my bathtubs, so that was that was my challenge with that. Um, the I actually stayed there again in January for the marathon with my husband. We were back over in ranchos again, and I liked it better at that experience. So the ranchos rooms still have tubs, and they have uh, changed the pepper market, so it's uh, more of a quick service. And there was actually more items on the menu that didn't have peppers, so we didn't have to order special things as often. Which, being somebody who has food allergies, I appreciate. The one caution I would have for anyone who's eaten in Toledo is you need to be super careful about the allergies. Make sure you demand to see the chef. Um, I had an issue. I told them I had an allergy. She assured me that there was no nothing hot in this, and it was. Um, and so I could have, I was fortunately that somebody else got the same dish I did, and I was able to wipe it off. It was a sauce that had cayenne pepper in it, and I'm allergic to hot peppers. Um, and so... You know, and I, I don't know that it will happen again to anybody, but I still feel like I have to tell people this um, because we did speak with the manager and he did say that it would be addressed. But just make sure you stress it with your the host when you're checking in, stress it with the um, your server and make sure you speak with the chef to make sure because it's not clear on the menu sometimes if you have um, odd allergies. So. Any April, do you have anything else you want to yeah. add? I know you stayed there in December. Uh, I love the Grand Destino. I, I'm former that Coronado Springs was my least favorite moderate. Uh, I also don't like the pepper market. I'm a very boring, like, six-year-old eater. So I don't like a lot of pepper or a lot of seasoning in food. And so I've had challenges just even ordering a burger there and not have it, like, spicy. So I'm very, very boring. And I didn't like having the long walk of having to go all the way around the lake formally. But I love Grand Destino. I, re I think it's beautiful. I love the design. I love the colors. And it's just a complete different feel. And it's nice because it's connected by a covered hallway to go into the main Coronado building. So you can go fill your mug, go to the food court, go to the gift shop, whatever you need to do. It's just a short walk, five minutes. The one critique I have is the bathroom layout. It's a little strange. In the center of the bathroom, you have a double sink. On one end, you have a room with the toilet in it, and then on the other end, you have a shower. And it was a nice shower, but it definitely wasn't a bathtub. And when I went to take a shower, I had to look for the towels, because the towels weren't with the shower. The towels are hung on a rack in with the toilet, which really makes no sense. It's on the other side of the bathroom, and it is a fairly decent-sized bathroom, so it's not like you can just, like, reach and grab it. 
you have to like walk across it. So it made no sense because there's like shelves under the sink and stuff. Like, why isn't there a towel near the shower? Why would it be in with the toilet? So I don't know. That was my own little peeve to it. But otherwise, the room was comfortable. It had a lot of outlets. And we only stayed there one night. But I, I thought it was nice. And, and it was really uh, such a different feel from Coronado that it was interesting. So I think it's well worth checking out. Yeah, definitely. Um, I should have asked this in the beginning because uh, we did this when we talked about the deluxe resorts. Uh, but Chrissy, how would you define the or describe the moderate level? Um, I really, I kind of use moderate, um, as typically my lead off. Um, I just enjoy the location of all the moderates. Um, I think, uh, for the most part, they're extremely centrally located in the whole Walt Disney World Resort area itself. Um, you know, they, they do now, especially with the Skyliner at Caribbean Beach and, um, you know, the boat from, both Port Orleans, um, you know, they do offer transportation options. Um, I mean, as, as far as describing them, I think they are, um, I just think they're, I find them to be definitely less quiet than the values. Um, the rooms are, I, I find the rooms a really good size, actually, um, for a family of four. Um, I don't know that I'd put four adults in. <laughs> Um, a moderate room. Um, but I just, I actually enjoy the moderate experience. Um, you know, there's still activities at the pools. They have, uh, all the pools have a, you know, the feature pools have water slides. Um, you know, I, I find they're just that, that kind of really is it. The moderate is just the best way to describe them. They are that middle of the road, um, enjoyable experience of, you feel like you're pampered enough and, and you're um, in a fabulous resort enough. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I just, it's one of those where I don't, I don't know how I'd explain that as far as, you know, the difference. It, everything with Disney is value moderate, deluxe, deluxe villa. Um, it really is the perfect mix of the middle of the road resort in the Disney experience. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and while we're on the topic of uh, favorite type things, well, we're going to start it again. What is your favorite park, Chrissy? My favorite park? Oh, boy. Um, I mean, I'm a classic Magic Kingdom. I really am. Um, Hollywood Studios holds a very special place in my heart, but I'd go to Magic Kingdom every day of the week and twice on Sundays if I could. <laughs> okay. And Amy, how about you? What is your favorite park? That is a tough question for me to answer. Um, I get asked that a lot. And I, I love Magic Kingdom for the, you know, kind of nostalgia part of it. And, you know, that is true Disney to me. But Hollywood Studios is right up there for me. I just love the, like, street atmosphere that goes on in Hollywood Studios. It's just so unique. Also, going back to saving steps, the fact that Hollywood Studios is a lot more compact. <laughs> I love that part of it. Um, but um, but then also one of my fav very favorite experiences in all of Walt Disney World is um, going on Flight of Passage. So, you know, um, I can't do without heading over to Animal Kingdom too. And Epcot's great. So I, it's hard to say. I don't have a, a set favorite. Well, ladies, it really has been a pleasure having you join us this week. Uh, next week, we're also going to have two guests. Amy's going to be coming back again. And we're also going to have another vacation specialist of Coasters and Castles Travel, Robin Wright. So we'll be talking about the Disney Value Resorts next week. Thank you for tuning in this week. Just a reminder to be sure to check out the Walking Down Main Street blog. Many of the agents from Coasters and Castles Travel write articles and share fun information. That can be found on walkingdownmainstreet.com or by searching Walking Down Main Street on Facebook. We would love to hear from you. If there is a topic you would like to have us talk about, please feel free to email us at info at travelcnc.com. That's T-R-A-V-E-L-C-N-C.com. A quick note about our sponsor, Coasters and Castles Travel is a full-service travel agency that specializes in Disney destinations, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, Ocean and River Cruises, and all-inclusive resorts.
The agency has been awarded the authorized Disney Vacation Planner status and the You Preferred Partner Program with Universal Studios. The agency was also honored with the President's Award with Travel Leaders in 2019. Minutes are precious, so until we meet again, enjoy them with your friends and family. 